Salesforce developers spend countless hours deploying their code to production. They either need to use archaic change sets or pay an arm and a leg to use industry standard tools. This leaves small teams with few practical options. Enter GitHub, the world's most popular place to track and store code. We can track changes by committing work with Git. Additionally, we can deploy this code to our Salesforce environment with GitHub Actions. My name is Justin, and today we'll explore how you can use GitHub Actions to deploy your Salesforce code. DevOps is the practice of simplifying code management and change deployment. Companies implement these processes to make their code bases easier to understand and deploy. Tools like DevOps Center have been created for exactly this purpose. When implementing a new change management process, a crawl walk run is the best approach. We want users to adapt the process, which means simplifying their end workflow. And at the end of the day, users will take the path of least resistance. If a tool or process has too much friction, the end user will not like the tool. Look at change sets, for example. Change sets are the standard way of migrating changes between orgs but they're quite cumbersome to use. One needs to manually tr select the changes to push. This can be cumbersome given the 25 item per page limit to show this information. And additionally, there's no automated tracking. With the aforementioned DevOps Center, you spend more time fighting the tool than deploying your changes. And while this tool does go and solve a lot of the downfalls of change sets, it's not the end solution that you you'll be happy with. And DevOps itself is a very interesting place in Salesforce. Salesforce environments are almost never compiled from scratch. Even tools like Scratch Orgs contain a subset of Salesforce environments customizations. Additionally, many companies use third-party apps to improve their workflow, like Conga Merge or DLRS. These apps are often difficult to maintain in sandbox environments. Furthermore, we have a lot of changes made within the UI, things like fields, objects, and flows are all declared through the UI. On top of all of this, many companies have agreed to maintain things like profiles, reports, and page layouts in production and not track them within sandboxes. With this in mind, we need to adapt the uniqueness of the Salesforce ecosystem into our DevOps process. First, we need to get the source code out of Salesforce. Most developers in 2023 are using VS Code and SFDX to manage Salesforce development. If you don't have this installed, check out the link above to install. This is Salesforce recommended tool for developers. VS Code is one of the most powerful IDEs and integrates seamlessly with SFDX. SFDX is a command line tool that gives convenient interface to perform developer tasks like pushing code written for Salesforce, running code with execute anonymous, retrieving field definitions from Salesforce, and more. Once we're inside VS Code, we can go ahead and create a new project. We can do so by pressing Control Shift P to open the command palette. We can find the create project with manifest. We'll wanna choose the empty template. We'll wanna give this project a name. I like the name SFDX project. And we'll wanna go ahead and press enter and select the folder location on our computer. VS Code will then redirect us to our newly created project, and we're not quite done configuring things. We we'll want to go ahead and authorize an, our Salesforce instance, so we'll open the command palette again, we'll press authorize an org, choose the URL that's desired. I'm going to be logging into a production org, so I'll choose production, we'll give it a nice name, I'll call this production, and a new tab on our browser will be opened with Salesforce. We'll just need to go ahead and log in, click accept, and we'll be given the authentication is successful. From here back in VS Code, you can see the authorization is successfully ran. And what we can do is download that code. Inside the file explorer on the right hand side, we can find the folder manifest. We can open this and look for the package.xml. We can go ahead and right click this and we'll want to go ahead and press retrieve source in manifest from org. This will go ahead and pull all of the source code from that org and organize it by the metadata type. Next, we want to go ahead and push this code to GitHub. We can do this by running the git init in the terminal. 
We want to go ahead and add the commands and commit with the commit message of initial commit. And then inside of GitHub, we'll want to create a new repository. I'm going to go ahead and give it a name of GitHub Action Tutorial. We'll want to change the repository type to private. And we want to ensure that no other files are created. That means no readme, no license, and no git ignore. From here, we can go and see some more setup instructions. You can see at the top this SSH URL that we'll need to go and push changes locally. We'll also need to go and configure SSH, which you can go and read about in the GitHub Docs. From here, back in our terminal, we can go ahead and press git remote add origin with our URL. And we can go ahead and push the changes upstream to the master branch. Now that we understand how to work with GitHub, let's dive deeper into how we can pull the source code out of Salesforce. On screen, we have the sample package XML that was inside the sample project. Package XML is the bread and butter of component management in Salesforce. This file helps us do actions like retrieving metadata from Salesforce, deploying metadata to Salesforce, and deleting metadata in Salesforce. The package.xml file will need to be continuously updated to support your Salesforce development. This is because other dependencies that are required in the Salesforce ecosystem will need to be tracked within the source code. This is including flows, custom fields, custom objects, remote site settings. All of these can be deployed using uh, this, but we need that in the source code to deploy it. It's important that after components are created in the Salesforce UI, that they are brought into the source code to be tracked. Fields and objects will need to be tracked in the source code to be deployed. Salesforce has many different types of metadata. We can add these metadata types into the package.xml to be tracked. For example, if we wanted to track the remote site setting, we could add the following code snippet after an end block of types. This documentation here is a great way of exploring all of the metadata that's within Salesforce. But what if you want to go ahead and track standard objects like account or product to or contact? If you read through the documentation, you'll notice that there's no standard object field. What we can do is we can use a declarative method over a wildcard. With the remote site setting, we use the wildcard operator to pull all remote site settings from Salesforce. With standard objects, we'll need to define the objects that we'll want to pull and track within the members. We can see here we have an account inside our members XML that we'll start tracking. This will then go and track all custom fields, validation rules, pages, and more. In practice, the package XML will contain a mix of wildcard operators and declared objects. I recommend tracking as little as possible in the source code so that then there are no downstream effects with over deployment. That being said, it's quite cumbersome to write out all of the components by hand. That being said, it's quite a cumbersome process to write and declare all of the components by hand. Thankfully, this is a widely understood problem that people have built tools to assist in building the package.xml. This website here, by Ben Edwards is a great starting point to generate the package.xml. It's as simple as logging into your Salesforce org, selecting the component option of exclude managed, press generate, and download the file and save it to your project. This is a great way of getting all of the components into the package.xml, but from here, I still recommend trimming the file down to reduce the size of what is being tracked. And well, what should we track in our source code? It isn't required to track all changes you made inside of Salesforce in your source code. In fact, you shouldn't track everything in your source code. This is a case where less is more. Only adding components that are being managed with developers will reduce headaches downstream. Most environments have developers and admins working together. If all source code is tracked in GitHub and an admin makes a change to a field of production, then the chain has the potential to be overwritten. Do you like this content? Let me know by hitting the subscribe button as it helps me out and lets me know that I'm doing a good job of providing free Salesforce knowledge to you. GitHub Actions are a way of automating tasks. GitHub Actions is an integrated CI CD, which is continuous integration slash continuous deployment tool. This allows developers to automate repetitive tasks. These tasks can be triggered on code pushes, pull requests, issue updates, and more. 
Additionally, these Git actions can go and run things like test classes, deploying to environments, code scanning, and more. GitHub actions are built with workflow files, which are defined in YAML. Each workflow file consists of one or more job, and each job contains one or more steps. A step represents a single task that should be performed, like running a script, checking out the code, or deploying an application. All GitHub actions are stored under the .github directory, and the actions can further be categorized as workflows or actions. Now, let's create a simple GitHub action that automatically runs the test classes within production when we push our code to GitHub. Earlier, we logged into our production environment, which saved a token offline that can be used for authentication. We can use this token to generate a login URL for CI CD platforms. Using SFDX, we can generate an auth URL that will be used for GitHub to authenticate into Salesforce. Running this command will go and output an SFDX auth URL that we'll store later. Inside of GitHub, we can go to settings, security. On the left-hand side, we can go ahead and open the secrets and variables and click on actions. We can press new repository secrets and we can give our URL a name. I like SFDX auth URL production. And the secret that we had before can be copied here. And we'll go ahead and save. I also recommend naming the URL based on the environment. So a sample Salesforce instance might have a production full sandbox, partial sandbox, and developer sandbox, all that needed to be deployed to. Now that we have the authentication solved, let's go ahead and create the test.yml file under the .github slash workflows folder. Inside this workflow file, we have a few key things. First, we have the name run test classes. You'll also notice that we have an on push paths that will go ahead and run this workflow when any changes within the force app directory are made. This means that something like updating an Apex class will go and run changes, but going and updating the readme will not. Next, we define the jobs of run test classes, which will go ahead and check out the code. We'll go ahead and install SFDX, and then we'll go ahead and log in. We'll go ahead and provide the production URL set previously, and then we'll go ahead and run the local tests. Notice the dash W wait flag that will go ahead and wait for 15 minutes. This allows the tests to be ran and and have the results come to GitHub. You can adjust the wait out time period as needed. In another video, I talk about how you can add SFDX scanner as a GitHub action. Check out that to have an additional sample. Now that you have your first GitHub action under your belt, let's go ahead and talk about manually deploying with GitHub actions. In a dream workflow, we would want to be able to create a GitHub action to deploy the source code to a target org. That means we would need to select a target environment, and then we would need to decide if this is a validation or a real deployment. We can reuse deployment code to reduce the amount of overlap of the actions. Actions are a reusable component that can be added to any workflow. This custom action will, will build a deployment package and deploy via SFDX. We can create the action under .github slash actions slash deploy environment slash action dot YML. You can see we have a name. We also have a description. Here we have inputs, which will be fed into from a workflow. We have a validate only environment name and the auth URL. Under runs, we go ahead and install SFDX. We go ahead and log in. We generate the manifest using the SFDX project generate which will go and generate the package.xml from our force app directory. And we'll go ahead and deploy this using the following flags. Note that we add the dry run flag if we are in validate only. Now that the action is created, it's time to add wrapper code that allows us to select the environment to deploy to. Add the following to the .github slash workflows slash deploy.yml file. We have a name of manual deploy, We'll have the action as workflow dispatch, which means that we'll want to provide as inputs the environment, 
which we can use a list of um, either partial sandbox or production. And we'll want to go ahead and add the validate only, which is where we want to de decide if we run it as a validation. Under jobs, we can go ahead and define jobs for each in environment based on the input environment. So we check if this input environment is a selected environment, and we'll go ahead and use our action that we created earlier and pass through our environment and auth URL. We can do the same thing for production here. As you can see, we just changed the if to production and we changed the author URL to production. From here, we can go ahead and run this by going to actions, manual deploy, run workflow on the right, and selecting the environment and choosing a run deployment as validation. We can also see the results of the deployment by clicking on the action. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe to hack the YouTube algorithm.